Carlos is asking whether you take interns. Yes, we do take interns. Um, we've had several interns. Um, some paid, most unpaid, but you know, uh, internship I guess pays in many ways. But yes, we're very happy to have interns. Um, um, we're actually trying currently to develop a, a bit more of a formal internship program. Um, so that it's, it's right now it's a lot of very ad hoc sometimes. So we want to try to formalize it. So we're we're working okay. to do that. Um, and I think the hope is to develop it at different levels. So we have some people who come who just want to exposure to science out of high school and they do a short, you know, one week kind yeah. of stint. We have people who are first degree holders um, and others who may have, you know, higher training. Um, and like I said, it's not just in science. So we've had interns who've come in software engineering interns who've come in to observe you know and learn a bit from our business our business department so um yeah very happy we do have interns and we really uh, you know hope to be able to um attract interns from across yeah. the, the, the continent and really the diaspora um yeah. any diaspora and africans who are listening i mean you are the sorts of people that i hope to be able to repatriate so um we're very very keen to to engage with with you Okay, Andy is asking. Oh, wait, he's saying thank you, Dr. Bediako. Interesting career path. I truly feel it's not easy to start a biotech company in Africa. What three factors have made it possible for you to take your Machi biotech to where it is? And okay, maybe we can answer that and then answer ask um answer the second bit of the question, which is on challenging experience so far. So let's start with what three factors have made it possible for you to take your machi biotech to where it is? Um oh well, I think there are many more there are many factors. It'd be difficult for me to limit to three, but I if I pick the top three that come to mind now, um it would start off with I guess opportunity. I have had throughout my career I've had great mentors who have invested in me. Um, I cannot underestimate the impact that they've had, um, ranging from mentors as far back even as high school, but certainly in undergrad, in research, in my PhD training, and then in my postdoctoral work. Um, and then most recently, when I returned to Ghana, I had a you know I, the WACBIB director who was very, you know, very open to allow me to exp explore this, including, you know, yeah. giving me free time, sort of accepting that I would not always be at work, um, but allowing me to sort of, you know, try to establish your matching. So that is one. I was given space and I was given opportunity by others who could have tried to block me, but chose to instead encourage me. Um, second one is, and maybe linked to that is advice. I sought a lot of advice. I am not a, I don't have an MBA, although probably, I may deserve one by the end of this journey, um, but I'm, no, I'm, I'm a classically trained scientist, right? Um, I don't have a business background. However, I formed, you know, I partnered with people with business expertise. So some of my co-founders have that expertise. And then additionally, I reached out to people both within and outside of my normal network who had expertise. Um, so I think it's, I was given space. I got great advice. Um, and the third thing I would credit is our team. Um, Yamachi is blessed with, I am blessed to work with people who are really committed. Um, it's not easy working for a startup. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone, yeah. definitely not people in a startup. Um, we cannot pay what you might be able to make elsewhere, but they've joined our company because they believe in the vision that I have laid out and they want to help us to achieve it. So I think Yamachi's current success it's also a credit to the team um, that 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 we have assembled and we hope to continue to grow. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think it's those three things which I think yeah. hopefully reflect it's really less about me and more about the influences and the people around me that have allowed Yamachi to, to be established. And I believe any success we have is going to be down to a collective effort. Um, yeah, and, yeah. and I hope I never, you know, I, I try to ensure that I keep remembering that even though I'm the leader of the group, yeah. um, I'm nothing without the team. And, um, yeah, that is, that has been a very important, um, piece of, of our success so far. I love that. I love that collective effort. So while we're still sp speaking about, um, achievements and, you know, the, how, how you go to your match about it, I, I want to ask one more question which is how 
has you know you being recognized as one of the top 40 under 40 business people uh, or you know top 100 most influential africans how has this impacted your machi your career and you know the overall look of of the company um well the impact on me is it piles more pressure on my head right um there are more people looking at you there's more visibility so i mean i'm grateful it's flattering I personally don't think I've achieved enough to 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 be classified. I mean, in you know, most influential, I was next to Burner Boy. It's like, come on, you know. I mean, um, but it's it's flattering. It's nice that science and biotech is being recognized in that way. Um, mm-hmm. I personally think I have a long way to go. I've not, as we say here, I've not arrived. Uh, yeah. I'm nowhere near arriving. Yeah. Um, but I but I'm grateful for the accolade and 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 I appreciate it. Um, I hope it has brought a little bit of visibility to our work. When you're building a business like Yamachi, yeah. good press is very important. Um, yeah. You know, you are supporting investors. You're trying to attract investment. Um, you need people need to hear your story. And so, I think what these have done at the early stage is provide an opportunity for for me to tell the Yamachi story more broadly. So I have appreciated that. Um, but to be honest, you know, I try. I don't really focus on those too much. Mm. I, um, I I instead you know, most of my focus is where we are going and how far we yet have to go um, yeah. and 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 trying to ensure that we get there. Okay, okay. Okay, let's now speak about the challenges. What what has mm. your, you know, most challenging experiences been so far with, with the biotech company? Oh, the challenges are many. Um, and, you know, I joke that when I started, I had zero gray hairs and now my beard mm-hmm. is increasingly gray. Um, and I think it's popping up elsewhere on my head. Um, building a company from scratch is very difficult. Um, building a biotech company in Africa is, uh, you know, also, you know, another layer of difficulty. Um, you know, the biggest challenge is securing the resources. Biotech is very capital intensive um, and very technical and um, it's not always easy to to secure the resources and it's an ongoing it's honestly an ongoing battle it's an ongoing struggle to have the resources required to keep keep doing the work you're doing and grow the company um also operating in africa where you know we do have certain ecosystem challenges means that sometimes your costs are even higher your your indirect costs go up because you have to pay for a generator in addition to power because you need to make sure that your freezers don't go down um you you don't always have all the ecosystem support that you might count on in in, in more developed biotech ecosystems. Um, a lot of what we use, the reagents, are not produced locally, which means we attract mm-hmm. import tariffs. So as you can see, a lot of these revolve around the cost of doing business, which is yeah. higher um, in Africa. Um, some of the other challenges are more about the concept. You know, biotech is new in Africa; it's less familiar. People are familiar with life science research, but it's typically academic. So when you talk about commercial, that can come across sometimes, you know, people get concerned about about what that means. So there's a fair amount of of educating that you need to do, but also a fair amount of self-reflection and and, and internal um, work we have to do to ensure that as we are commercial, we maintain our ethics and we maintain the focus on trying to benefit community. So that is, I think it's a challenge, but it's also... Um, it's also an opportunity for us. Um, yeah. So, I, I, but I think, yeah, if I were to summarize the challenges of biotech yeah. in Africa, the biggest problem, all the problems typically stem mm-hmm. from the fact that we are the first of our kind or one of the first of our kind. And so the ecosystem mm-hmm. is very new. It's mm-hmm. very bare. There is not a lot of support. And mm-hmm. so you ha- end up having to do a lot of heavy lifting yourself. And, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. um, I guess the advantage of an open space is you don't have too many competitors, um, yeah. but um, it is it is very challenging because you are defining the space and it, mm-hmm. it, it, it you you don't have that many pieces of evidence to point at to provide people with assurances that this is viable. So you're proving yeah. you're yeah. basically a, a proving the viability whilst you try to grow, and that that is quite challenging. Yeah, and speaking about that, I don't know whether this will come out political, <laughs> but uh, do you get any support from the Ghanaian government um, with the with the company? 
Not directly. Um, we certainly have partnered with some government agencies for certain projects. So we have good relationships with the Ghana Health Service, which is a government a entity that manages health facilities in Ghana. We have good relationship with the Ghana FDA um, um, and other organizations. So I would say I, we have a good working relationship with a variety of government entities that you know are in the spaces in which we work but we okay. are yet you know okay. we've not received direct funding from the government um okay. but i would say you know where 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 possible we have received some some support um yeah. in terms of um yeah sort of capacity yeah yeah okay that's good at least that's a good um so i think there's a bit of repetition on in the questions in terms of uh, whether you take in students. So there's questions about PhD opportunities and placements, masters. And I think there's one who's asking whether you can partner with a, a, a university, I think department to take interns from the school every year. So maybe can you collectively summarize uh, this? Um, so like, as I said, we, we are trying to work on an internship program. We are not a very big company, we, so it's difficult for us to take more than one or two interns at a time. So that limits how many we can do in, in a period of time. Um, we don't, we're not a training institution, so we don't run and we don't intend to run PhD masters or PhD training. Um, I tell people that I don't have the time to train. I need fully finished products who can work. So, um, my, my role is to give masters and PhD students who graduate a job. Um, mm -hmm. but, um, but I'm very happy to, and I hope to, you know, form strong relationships with universities. We already have a good relationship yeah. with WACBIP at the University of Ghana. Um, we are very, you know, I think as we grow, it would be great to be able to mature these relationships to provide some opportunities for students to rotate through our lab to get a taste of industry. Um, and obviously the best of those, I would hope to be able to recruit uh, where we have vacancies to join us. Um, so I'm more focused on less training and more, yeah. I would say, job creation, yeah. but yeah. we are you know, I view it as a large ecosystem, and so we are very happy to op occupy our space in a larger ecosystem of capacity building across the continent. Great, yeah, and, and I think these guys in Ghana, so probably might want to, you know, take up the conversation later on with Yael. Uh, his name is Pius. So there's another question on, <laughs> I think I've already asked this, but Doc, one of the many issues for startups in Ghana is funding. Will you advise a young person like me to look up to Ghanaian government for funding? But I think we've covered that. Or oh, you want to add something to that? Um, I would say it's unlikely that the government is not just Ghana government. Most African governments yeah. are currently very cash strapped. So yeah. I don't think that is a viable place to look for startup funding. Um, you're, you know, you need to, I believe, private sector um, areas like that are, are, are better, although it's still very difficult. Um, I think when if you want to start a business, though, funding is not the first thing you worry about. The first thing is you need to understand what you are building and what is your product. Um, it's often, you know, we had a pitch session yesterday as part of the conference at WACBIP, and um, oftentimes people lose sight of, you know, what I've learned, and I'm not, no, no, I wouldn't call myself an expert, but what I've learned very quickly is in building a business, whether it's in science or whatever um, area, the most important thing is the product. You know, what is it that your business is providing? Is it a service? Is it a product? Whatever it is, that is something that you need to be able to articulate very clearly. Um, so the first thing in trying to start a business is to decide what is it that your business does. And once you have some clarity on that, then you begin to explore opportunities to get initial funding to get it off the ground. Um, unfortunately, in Africa, those sources are limited, but it is yeah. possible. Um, but government currently is not, um, in my opinion, is not a very viable um, um, place to look for startup funding. Okay, and then uh, the person also asks whether, what are some of the challenges you encountered at the University of Ghana that pushed you to start the company? But I think you've spoken about that, so I think we can answer another question, which is, how do you balance business and family life? Yeah, you have to ask my family. Um, it's very difficult. Um, you know, I, I joke that work-life balance is it's a bit of a myth. You know, um, it's difficult, especially at this stage. Um, I, you know, I travel a lot. I work long hours, um, but it is something that I I would like to try to do more. To you know, to be honest, I it's it's important to spend time with your you know with your children. Um, I don't want to 
miss the you know miss my kids growing up um yeah. so it's something i'm I, I hope to try to be more intentional but it is certainly very difficult um because of the demands of of what i'm doing and and how hard i have to work to try to to deliver um but it is you know i, I will also say that some of the most relaxing times i have lately are when i can get home and just watch tv you know with 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 my daughter um and i think you know just you know or you know listen to her tell me about something that's important to her so i'd encourage everybody i mean it's hard but i do think it's something we need to work out as people mm -hmm. that you need to try to find some sort of balance it's i don't think it ever at this stage i don't expect to achieve actual balance but at least yeah. carve out periods of time where i can just decompress yeah. um not worry about investors or payroll or runway um and just talk to my daughter about you know some cartoon she's watching and just you know just be a dad yeah yeah okay uh we don't have anyone that wants to speak up <laughs> i think everyone's just typing in the chat box but uh, i'll continue reading them out but if you want to speak up i think i mean you're free to speak up so just raise your hand and then i'll ask you to unmute so uh the other question is how has the ghana regulatory agents come along with approving either ethics or products to the market in terms of the time taken um, so we, as, as yet, I mean, we we are very much a dis, an early discovery company. So we're building data. Um, so a lot of the regulatory engagements we have are primarily with ethics, IRBs and ethics committees. Um, those vary from facility to facility and country to country. Um, they can be a bit slow. And I know that is something that across Africa is trying to be improve, improved. And there are certain um, you know, agencies that are taking that on. But to be honest, in general, we found it to be relatively, I mean, we, we were finding ways to, to work with them. Um, you know, I think it starts off with preparation, knowing what documentation is required. So we have a compliance team within Yamachi whose role is to sort of help streamline our ethics applications. Um, and it's their job to be up to date on all the requirements so that when you put in the application, it's less likely that it's going to be flagged for in, being incomplete and that all of that helps to save time so the systems can be made more efficient and i believe they will but you can also help increase efficiency by just taking care of what you can on your end um, which is what we try to do um and then you know yeah so so i think that's kind of how we've, we've handled any sort of time delays on the diagnostic side, we have a small diagnostic business. There we have to work with the Ghana FDA to get approval for any services we run. Our lab is registered by the Health Facilities Regulatory Authority in Ghana, which is HEFRA, which is sort of the um, government agency that regulates any sort of clinical lab. So on that side, we engage with them. They have pretty straightforward processes, to be honest. In Ghana, many things these days are becoming a little bit more electronic. Um, so I, I would say once again, in that front, I wouldn't say it's a huge hindrance. I think actually the regulatory agencies are are, are working hard themselves to improve their processes. So I think for us, it's it's been quite, a, um, it hasn't presented too much of a challenge. All right. All right. So I'll allow you to take a, a bit of a pause as well and just talk about uh, your article. So I, I, was, I won't dive into it, but I'll just say I posted a link uh, on the chat about an article that has been published by the Bill and Melinda Gates uh, Foundation about Dr. Bidiako. Uh, it talks about, you know, the Ghanaian researcher who came back home. So you want to learn more about his story and, you know, everything that, I mean, some of it, he's covered it with us. But yeah, you might as well just go ahead and read the article as well. Get to learn about this absolutely remarkable work that um, Dr. Ray is doing uh, in Ghana. So, Dr. Ari, there is <laughs> still a lot of, I think, three or more questions in the chat. Um, let me see whether we can, which ones we can ask you to answer. Um, so, Mike is asking, or he's saying, excellent work, and thank you for the inspiration. What other business opportunities would you suggest for people to explore, especially for individuals that are trained in biomedical sciences, data science? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I think Peter is asking Sorry, whether think... the findings shared is public. I, I don't know. 
can you please clarify which findings you are talking about, Peter? But yeah, uh, please proceed. Uh, yeah, I think the internet broke up briefly, but I, I, I guess I can scroll through the chat to read. Um, so what other business opportunities? So, well, I wouldn't consider myself an expert in all business opportunities in biotech. I found one yeah. and that's the one I'm trying to build. But Africa is a big continent with a lot of problems and problems also equals solutions, right? Problems need solutions, which means there's lots of opportunities. Um, I think the key is to get advice because a, a, a good idea or a solution does not always mean it is a business it can it will make a good business so um the challenges we have in africa you know um are many and they require many solutions but not all those solutions necessarily are going to be commercially viable um so i think one thing is to consider what your market is and mm -hmm. if there is a market for the solution that you've developed um mm -hmm. in some cases some solutions may be better suited for um academic um and initiatives or non-profit initiatives um, so I think, yeah, I, I would answer that question by saying, you know, there are many opportunities. Um, some yeah. of them may be good business opportunities. The way to sift through is like I did is to get sound yeah. advice from people who understand business and sort of field test some of your ideas and get constructive criticism. Um, yeah. in terms of our findings, um, our research studies are we do we are we well we are still early on but we are we have a couple of papers um a few papers that have come out um very early reports on work we've done we have a few more detailed research papers that are currently under review so we do aim to publish um the work that we do some of it will remain proprietary for a period so we are a commercial entity and so some of the data we may have we may sort of sit on as we continue to develop towards a product yeah. um but you know we are very you know and especially the academic collaborations that we we form those are really meant to build up foundational knowledge and so those we we fully support publication and release of those findings for for use within the academic community so we 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 already are publishing we intend to publish a lot so a lot of the findings the Amachi mix will be will, will be public um but at the same time you know the nature of the work we do we also hope to be able to discover certain things that can eventually be protected um, and can be registered as ip that can then be moved forward for development which is how we would also then manage to generate revenue and contribute towards the sustainability of our business okay and then uh another question from peter is about computational resources uh mm -hmm. so can, can you speak about that the the resources you need to handle the kind of data that, you know, Yamachi Biotech receives? So yeah, computational capacity is very important. It's yeah. something that we have invested in. Um, we have a small computational team um, led by Abdullah Diallo, who is based out of, of, of Montreal in Canada. He's um, from Guinea originally. Um, mm -hmm. So he's an AI, computational biology, computer scientist. Um, and we have a couple of other um, bioinformaticians who, who work with us. The infrastructure currently we do a lot of stuff in the cloud so you know aws google cloud um these are platforms that are available to companies like us where you don't have to build all the infrastructure locally but you can house yeah. a lot of your your data in secure cloud infrastructure and then spin up virtual machines when you need to you need certain compute but these are also not necessarily cheap um, they do have costs associated yeah. Um, and at times there is need to build your own sort of storage capacity locally. So this is something that is evolving as Yamachi grows, as our data yeah. grows and hopefully our resources grow, then more and more infrastructure is built. But, um, yeah. you know, I think for those thinking of doing this kind of work, the, the development of cloud resources really speeds up and makes it accessible. You don't need a fancy server in your you know neck in your office necessarily you can take advantage of infrastructure built elsewhere um, provided you have resources to sort of pay for access um, and actually these days there are a number of programs that give credits so um, for young startups doing impactful work you can apply for credits um, from some of these vendors so that at least for a period um, you can get some some you know some free or at least some some discounts on your storage or your computational um, or the computes that you need. OK, OK, thank you, Doc. Uh, so just I'll take one final question from the audience, and this would be from I think David has raised, raised his hand. 
Uh, go ahead and speak up, David. Okay. Um. Hello. Can you hear me very well? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Okay. Um. First of all, thank you for this uh, wonderful conversation, and thank you to Dr. Bidiako for um the time and everything. So my my question is is very simple. Is from a tweet that Doc tweeted. You know, he said yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I think it was um, a conference you attended and you said that it is a sovereign thought that in a room representing trillions of dollars in IP, as far as I can tell, there isn't a single African company exhibiting. And you also ended by saying that we must change this narrative. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Doc remembers that tweet. But yes, then I, I, I Okay, okay. So I, I, I want to ask um, Doug that what's, what is he and Yamachi doing to uh, change this narrative or to bridge this gap? That's my question. No, thank you, David. Um, so yeah, so that, that tweet came from uh, when I was at the, I think I was at ASCO um, in Chicago, yeah. which is the American Society for Clinical Oncology. Um, all the biggest biopharma companies in the world were represented, um, and it was striking. These are multi, multi, multi-billion dollar companies. Um, Japan alone had at least four, five, maybe even six companies. Japan is a very small country, um, mm. and Africa is a whole continent, and I couldn't find a single African company. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's very sobering, and I think we need to recognize that life science pharmaceutical is is business um and if we if africa is not represented if we don't have companies in this space we are missing out on significant revenue generating opportunities for our economies um you know i encourage everyone to read about novo nordisk which is one of the most valuable pharma companies in the world right now um, i think if not number one they are number two um and Last year alone, I believe they made a significant contribution to Denmark's GDP. In fact, without yeah. Novo Nordisk, Denmark would have posted negative growth. Thanks to Novo Nordisk, Denmark as a country posted positive growth. That's a single company. Um, that is the power of pharma and biotech. That is the size of, of, of economic power, financial power that we are talking about. So we all complain you know, about the state of our continent and we all bemoan that our economies, I mean, to put it simply, Novo Nordisk is worth more than Ghana. Ghana's GDP is, I think, probably 10 times less than the value of Novo Nordisk as a company. Now imagine if Novo Nordisk was a Ghanaian company and the revenue Novo Nordisk makes would be added to Ghana's GDP. Ghana's GDP would quadruple in size, right? If you could just, you know, wave a wand and make Novo Nordisk Ghanaian. Um, and so the vision that I have is companies like Yamachi across Africa can make that contribution. Our economies are not going to grow by themselves. Our economies yeah. are not going to grow because of aid. Aid money yeah. does not add to your GDP, right? Yeah. Um, revenue your businesses generate is what yeah. is really accounts for your GDP. Um, and so we need industries. We need industries across many sectors. But one sector that maybe we've ignored for a long time is biotech. And yet we have this beautifully diverse human population. We have great biodiversity across, you know, plant and animal species. Um, we have arable land that lends itself to agriculture and bio, you know, biotech or, you know, agricultural innovations. All of these are opportunities for Africa to lead. So within, you asked about Yamachi, my vision for Yamachi, the reason we are a life science research company is ultimately we want to register IP. Um, I want Yamachi to make discoveries so that one day there may be a cancer drug released that would primarily be Yamachi IP. That revenue from that drug will mm. add to the GDP of the continent. And so if you had companies like, so if Yamachi becomes like a Novo Nordisk and you have 10, 15, 20, 30 Yamachis across Africa yeah. emulating that model. You wouldn't need, 
it, would, it would be very straightforward to see the impact that that would have on the continent. So that is the yeah. vision. And that is why I think we need companies like Yamati. That is why we need to invest in, in, in sort of private sector led biotech. Um, I've written about this before. There's a blog I wrote a couple of years ago um, that I can share with Ruth if you haven't seen it. If you Google my, my name, it, it may come up. Um, but I talked about what I view as the power of biotech to transform Africa's economy. So as I've gone on this journey as a classical scientist with no business training, I've come to value or see the role that biotech, life science has, not just in transforming our health. We always think of a vaccine, we think of sick children. Biotech has the potential to transform our sick economies. And in any country all over the world, when the economy does better, people's health is better because when people have more money, they live in better conditions. And a lot of these problems, you know, especially with infectious disease anyway, a lot of those problems begin to resolve themselves. And even with non-communicable disease, they will have more resources to get the care that they require. So biotech i think is more than just health it is economic growth and economic development but that would only happen when our science is generating revenue our science is we have commercial outlets for the science um and so that's what we try to we're hoping to do at yamachi we're very early in the journey we have a long way to go but my dream is that yamachi can at least be part of that um, mm. that revolution to transform africa let our science, our 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 biotech, transform yeah. our economies.